Welcome to the Women Living Well After 50 podcast. I'm Sulon Carrick and I'm passionate about inspiring, motivating, supporting and informing women over 50 to embrace this exciting time of life. Health and wellness in mind, body and spirit are the foundations for living well, but there is so much more to a life well lived. Each week through conversations with my guests, I'll be presenting topics that will help us all to live well and enjoy life. So join me as we discover new ways to become women living well after 50. Are you ready to start living? What are you waiting for? Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of the Women Living Well After 50 podcast. I'm Sue Long Carrick and it's lovely to have you join me. Now, are you lacking vitality? Have you lost your direction and you're not sure where to go? Are you really thriving in this next chapter of life? Well, if you said no to any of those questions, my next guest is going to be able to help you. My guest is Deb Johnston, a transformation life and business coach, NLP practitioner, EDI. SC consultant and trainer and a professional mindset speaker and coach. She works with people locally, globally and Australia wide to guide them to transform their lives, business or career and create the life that they want, the life of their dreams. Today we're going to be discussing seven, the seven part process to increase vitality find new direction and thrive in this next chapter of life. And Deb's going to share with us how we can do that. So let's go and join the conversation. Welcome, Deb. It's lovely to have you as a guest again on the Women Living Well After 50 podcast. Thank you for inviting me, Sue. I'm really, um, I was really excited to receive your invitation. Well, this is... um, you're one of the early episodes in season five and you first, um, I first chatted to you, I'm not sure if it was in season one or two. So it's been a little while and um, I do follow you and your work and uh, the topic we're going to talk about today is just going to be so helpful to the listeners that I'm excited to have you. Again, you're always uh, full of um, good information. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's most of it's come from my own experience. I think, you know, there's obviously coaching tools that I use, but Mm. the majority of it's come from my experience, in my personal experience and all through experience coaching women as well. So, yes. um, So talking about experience for the listeners who haven't met you before, um, could you just give us a little bit about your background and what led you to where you are today and doing the work that you do with uh, with women yeah sure yeah I well I'm I'm a single mum um well they're grown up now they're in their 30s the, the youngest is just about to turn 30 um I'm a single mum and and I did a lot of different jobs during this time I was raising my kids so um I, I, I don't have a university background. I haven't done any of that kind of thing. It's purely what I've learned through life and what I've learned in, a, uh, I did a two-year uh, study with coaching, in life coaching and NLP um, to diploma level. So um, I don't have a university background. But what I do have is a lot of experience. When my kids were young, I worked in a lot of different industries. I worked in retail for about 10 years because it gave me the hours and the money that I wanted to be able to um, support my kids and be there for my kids. And also it gave me the connection because connection is, is my top core value. And, um, and so I, I've always had a gift with people. I've always had that gift to be able to, just connect with people really easily and effortlessly and um, in my work I found that I was the person that a lot of people came to when they had a problem or if they were you know sort of brainstorming what it is that they wanted to do next you know give them direction help them find direction of what they wanted to do next and I generally did it through listening to be honest I've never been much of an advice giver. I do it through listening and helping people hear their voice. So um, 
I was in retail for 10 years, like I said, and then I moved into management. So I worked into, uh, moved into management in small business. And I think small business management is a fantastic education in itself because you learn all the aspects of the business, not like corporate, where you learn just one department, your department or your section that you manage. It's, it's actually you learn about the whole um, the whole smorgasbord of running a business. So I did that for quite a few years when my kids got a bit older. Uh, I worked in management in retail, medical, event management, medical cosmetics. And then I launched into the coaching world. I, I found myself at a space in my life where I'd had one child already leave home. One child was still at home doing an apprenticeship and making lots of noises that when he left home, he was going as far as he could. So um, within Australia, he doesn't like anywhere else. He only likes Australia. Um, and so I was in that space in my life, not even thinking about I'm going to have an empty nest. I've never even heard of that, you know, at that stage. Mm. Um, but knowing that I wanted more for myself, that I wanted to do something with a lot more meaning than what I was doing. I was enjoying what I was doing. I was working with a great team. But I'd also reached the stage where, of I don't have the tools anymore to help these people. Um, I need more. I need more tools. I was at that stage and I was doing a declutter. It was the last day of the year. I was doing a declutter in my, in, in my email inbox and I got to the bottom of the email inbox and I saw an email that I'd flagged about two, three years before at that stage, decluttering was a new process for me. And so I looked at it and it was all about life coaching from one of the biggest schools in Australasia. So I, um, I signed up, I signed up and I went to the foundational um, weekend did that and at the foundational weekend I signed up for the full year full two years so uh, that was a huge journey huge journey I made a lot of mistakes um starting my own business you know I definitely felt inspired to do have my own business in the coaching industry after that foundational weekend and it was back at the time when I don't know about where you are, Sue, but in Cairns, 10, 11, 12 years ago, it would have been when I started my study, in Cairns, coaching was virtually unheard of. There was maybe a couple of people doing it. So um, mm. and you get online and there's heaps of coaches in Cairns. But back then, um, I'd go out networking and people would just have a blank look on their face when they asked me what I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And look, it was the same in Brisbane and I'm sure uh, in Australia, uh, it's really only been the last five years, I think, that the, the, uh, the world has opened up to coaching and life coaching and business coaching and all these sort of things that... Yeah. Um, as you say, people at least know what it is these days instead of just looking at you. But I wanted to just, before we get on to what we're going to talk about today, which is really going to be helpful, uh, I did want to pick up on a couple of points uh, that you talked about there. Now, you said you didn't have a university degree. Neither no. do I. <laughs> and I'm, I have worked with people, I've worked in different areas like you have, where people have had the university degree, but they haven't had the experience. And you can have as many pieces of paper and, and you know certificates up on your wall, but if you haven't had that experience and add to that the life experience, to me, it doesn't mean anything. So I think that by you, you know, not having a university degree means nothing. It's all about that life experience that you can talk from the heart and talk, say, well, this is what I've been through and this is how I handled it. And, you know, you've had a variety of experience, which again shows that, you know, you don't have to be stuck in the one place doing the same thing all the time. Many years ago, um, you know, 
people would get into a job and they'd be there for life. But I, I, you know, I think that to add to the fabric of your experience and the richness, you do need to try different things because it, it, it stretches you. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you signed up for the coaching, you probably felt a little bit of self doubt. I don't know about you, yes. but, but for me, if I'm going to try something new, even the podcast, you know, I think, oh, God, I don't know if I can do this. I'll press the button anyway and see what happens. So you overcame your fear or any self-doubt or any reservations and went for it. And there are three really good learnings that I think our listeners can take just from meeting you. Mm, yeah, I yeah. It's, you know what, um, that you, that university degree stuff, I have, I hear that so often, I'm not qualified enough. I hear that so often from women and, oh my goodness, if you, you reach the age of 50 and you're not qualified enough, really, after all that life experience, isn't that qualification more than enough qualification? Mm, you know? mm, it's mm. really, it's, um, yeah, and it, I'm not downplaying a university education. It's important. Yeah, for some mm -hmm. people, it's really important. And, you know, some of our greatest experts in the world, our scientists have all got, mm -hmm. you know, university educations. It's important. But there are so many things that we can do in life without that. So, yes. so many. Mm. Yes, I'm not downplaying it either. I mean, mm. for my children, it was go and get a university degree and that sort of thing. But what I'm suggesting is that there's a lot of women that get to their 50s and they go, well, I'm not really qualified to do anything. But if they did take the time to list their skills and their life skills as well, they would see what they've achieved in their life. And it doesn't matter that they don't have the degree. Yeah. Great yeah. if you do, that's that's wonderful. And as you say, I used to work with scientists and um, they were just so intellectual and just so uh, knowledgeable. But, um, you know, when it comes to life experience, it's what we experience as individuals that matter and what we learn from that. Oh, so, so true. And it doesn't matter how much education you have, when you do something new, you're going to feel nervous. It's, yeah. um, you're going to feel nervous. I was so nervous. I got in my own way a number of times. It took me four months from finding that email to actually signing up. It took me four mm -hmm. months. And, and in the end, it was a friend said to me, what are, I won't use the exact word she said, but what are you waiting for? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you waiting for? You've got the money to do it, haven't you? And I went, oh, well, I've got savings. And yeah, so you've got the money to do it. <laughs> just do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just is a matter of just doing it and not and, and trying not to dwell on it too much. Oh, what if it doesn't go right? Well, what if it doesn't go right? The world won't end. You it know, we right. don't have, you know, so you just start again. So that yeah. brings me to our topics today, which are, you have a seven part process and you've recently done a webinar on this and I know that you've got an ebook that's been uh, the original seven part process um, on your website, which I will encourage um, listeners to to visit and we'll put all the links in the show notes. But it's a process about increasing vitality, finding mm. new direction and thriving in our next chapter. Mm. And I think that they're three really standalone topics, but they complement each other as well. Because we get to that point, as you said, the empty nest, and we're probably feeling tired. And especially yeah. if we're going through menopause and we're working full time or we're running a household full time, you know, you 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 feel you lose that zest for living. Yeah, and do. then you you think, where am I going? I don't know what I'm going to do now. So let's talk about, I'm going to hand it over to you to talk about, first of all, perhaps increasing that vitality. Is that, is that what the first part is, to get that energy and then to find our direction? Yeah, to get the energy. And, and really, you know, they all kind of feed into each other as well because, you know, um, if we are putting all our time and energy into things for other people 
or things that don't light us up or a job that we're just doing for money um, because we've lost the, the thrill that we used to have for it. Um, if we're doing all that, we are going to lose our energy because we're putting energy into things that are not giving energy back. And I think I, we talked about this before we started recording. This is my intent this year to only go in the direction of flow because that's I'm putting energy into what's giving energy back. So it's it's really um, one of the things that we begin with when I, when I work with people in her rediscovery is getting clear on what balance is for that person. You know what balance looks like because. Everyone has a different idea of balance. The problem that I see a lot of times is people following these generic structures of, well, you've got to have this, you've got to have that, well, you should have this, you should have that. Who says we have our own idea of balance? You know, we know what's important to us. And if we're putting energy into what someone else says is important, then we're going to lose our energy. So it's it's important that we get clear on what it is that we value in life, you know, and, and I'm not talking about just core values here. I'm talking about the aspects of life that we value. One of those, though, I talk about the shoulds, but one of those things that it is important to include in that is our health. And I know that you and I both agree on that. It's, it's our health and well-being mm -hmm. um, because without our health, we don't have the fuel to put into anything else. So, um, without our health, it doesn't matter what is happening in our world, we're not going to be able to enjoy it to the fullest. So it's important that we look after our health. So that's things like, as you already know, it's making sure that you have a healthy diet. And it's and, and this is going to help with menopause too. It's not just a weight loss diet. When I talk about diet, I'm talking about a lifestyle way of eating. So mm. it's, you know, making sure that we're eating in a way that's good for our body, because again, we're all unique, we're all different. So what suits my body might not suit your body and it might not suit the ladies who are watching, depending on, you know, what, what their body type is, what their blood type is, all of these different like, kind of things play a part in it. So it's finding the, the, the way of eating that's right for us individually um, you know, there's a trend of you must eat vegan, you must eat vegan. Well, it doesn't suit everybody. You know, it's important to know this, that it doesn't suit everybody. For some it does, for some it doesn't. So it's it's finding the way of eating that's right for us, cutting out processed foods. That's an overall thing for everyone. Mm. <laughs> cutting out processed foods, sugar, you know, minimizing alcohol and all of that sort of thing. That's a, um, a blanket for everyone. But yeah, exercising regularly, doing a, some sort of movement where you, you're present regularly, you know, um, doing meditation or, you know, doing like something like Tai Chi or yoga if, if you find it difficult to sit and just focus. Mm, mm. So many different parts to that, to... Um, to maintaining health and well-being but that's just one part of what we see mm. as balance yeah mm. well I I also um look it's the second time I've heard it this week about uh you know the shoulds and what we should be doing and and how really we're an individual and you know for part of my tagline is living life your way because we are all individuals and I encourage people women to try different things be open but if it's not working for you, be able to say, that's not for me. Because yes. it's not, as you say, it's robbing you of joy. It's robbing you of energy. It's not lighting you up. And um, as you say, balance is different. Some people might think that balance is, oh, you know, I can't overload myself with different things. Um, I've just got to have a, you know, sort of, uh, a bit more of an easygoing approach to life. Other people thrive on being busy. Yes, that's right. They're getting that joy from the different areas in their life. Then to me, that's a balanced life. It's all about how you feel within yourself about your life. So I definitely agree with you that um, 
whilst we should be open to lots of different information, we've got to go with what's right for ourselves and have the confidence to say, this is right for me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I Yeah, it's so, so, so important. It can be easy to be led by other people, especially if we don't know, this is the thing, especially if we don't know what's important to us especially mm. if we don't know what balance is for us, then it becomes easy to just to buy into someone else's um, structure or framework of what balance is. Um, but it, when we get clear on what it is for us, then we can design our own life so that we are feeling more energised every day. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. And I think designing our life is perfect. You know, I'm going to write that down because we are, we really are in control of our own life, aren't we? We encourage Ooh. everyone else. We encourage our children, live your life. It's your life, live it the way you, you want to. Um, we encourage others to do that. And then, but we don't have, let ourselves do that. We sort of, you know, don't, feel that we've got the right to do that. So designing a life that's making us happy will then benefit everyone around us because we'll be a happy person. So they'll want to be around you and you'll want to do things. And that zest for living will yeah. come because you're, you've are you got that inner contentment and happiness within. So when we need to you know we're, we're starting to find things with well as you say eating well exercising regularly taking time for reflection just getting out into nature all these things fuel us um in mind and body to give us that vitality so we get to a point in life where we think where are we going mm. you know it might be an empty nester it might be someone who's retired who is retiring and they haven't got a plan where do i go now i've been so used to going to and you know work and and having my career where do i go yeah. so a lot of women and i've been through that myself find um me too <laughs> you know, they just get lost yeah yeah they do yeah so so many women get lost and and i went through this i, I didn't go through this so much when when I had the empty nest because I already had my business to focus on so and and my dad actually came back into my life and moved up very close to me so he kind of filled the void my dad I didn't realize that at the time um but he kind of filled the void my dad together with my business um but when he passed away which was about wow, three and a half years ago now um when he passed away that's when it really hit me. That's when mm. I really hit that void, um, that dark spot that what am I meant to do next? You know, who am I? Um, I'm, I, I, lost, I lost joy for my work. I was still working with people. And of course, I always love working with my clients. But I lost the drive to actually take my business, you know, forward, that I lost the drive for that. Um, and I'd always been really driven around my business. So I lost that. I lost confidence. I lost a sense of identity. Um, um, and I, 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 I felt completely lost. I felt lost. I felt helpless. And a, a, a good friend of mine, I'm really fortunate to have some really close friends who, who share insights the same way as I do. So it's really very fortunate she said to me, what's happened, Debbie? You've lost your foundation. And it kind of just went bang. That's what it is. And I, I had been getting an intuitive nudge for about a month, about a year, sorry, a month, about a year before my dad died. And I'd been ignoring it because I was quite happy doing what I was doing. I, you know, I, I felt like I wanted more, but it wasn't it was painful. You know how we don't often don't take action until it gets painful yes. <laughs> so it wasn't painful it was just like oh that sounds like a good idea now I'll just keep doing what I'm doing and um but when he died there was nothing else that really um gave me that spark and that did uh, it was like a little 
shining light, light in the darkness. It was almost like a calling. And I thought, okay, I'm going to explore this. Let's explore it. And I just pulled out my journals, got all my coaching tools that I knew would be helpful. And I just started journaling and um, exploring, exploring me and who I am without the role of daughter, without, you know, the role of mother, without, without all of those roles. Because this is one of the reasons we get lost in this phase of life is because the roles have all changed. Mm. And, and we've over-identified with the roles that we've played for other people. And because of that, when the roles end or change, in, change drastically at this stage of life, then we feel a bit lost. So it's, um, it's about us getting to know who we are now without all that. And that's what I did, although I didn't realise I was doing it at the time. I just started writing. Yeah, yes. it was like yeah. an intuitive thing. And um, because I had this idea and I wanted to, I knew alignment was important, so I wanted to make sure that I was on the right track. I wanted to make sure that I had that alignment because at that stage I wasn't really trusting my intuition. Um, and so I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and, um, and then I acted on it. Um, and it's the, the, what I took myself through has become my process mm. for helping women. Mm. Yeah. And again, that comes back to the life experience. You've been through it, it's worked, mm. so you can share that with others. Mm. We were talking about, you know, you said you felt lost and helpless. Um, and we do feel that way, but we're still projecting an image perhaps where we've got it all together. No one would really pick up on it or we don't talk about it. We just sort of think, oh, well, I'm, I'm sure I'll muddle through and find something, but, instead of perhaps seeking help from even your friends just talking about it because they might be going through it too and you know we can project an image that's different to what we're feeling on the inside and i think that you know your friend obviously picked up on that and you were talking to her perhaps about it and she was able to give you some starting point and so i think that we have to overcome that feeling that oh I can't let anyone know that I'm not doing well or I'm lost or whatever there's all these women out here doing this that and the other and I see them on social media and they've got the perfect life which we all know is not perfect yeah. and um, I think we've just got to have that confidence in ourselves to if we are struggling to to yeah. get some help mm -hmm. from friends yeah. or professionals or whatever and um, or someone like yourself who's been through it and um, I think that, you know, that's, that's a good starting point to find that new direction because, as you said, we've had so many different roles. Uh, mm. but, then, but, but then, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still a mother. I'm still a grandmother. I'm still a wife. I'm, you know, but that's sort of a bit, it's, the dynamics have changed now. They don't need me as much. So right. I can focus on me. But what do I like? What do I want to do? That's yeah. what I think a lot of women face. It is, yeah, it is. And, and that's, that's the process I take women through is to help them get clear on who they are, who they are without all of those roles. You know, what makes, what makes us who we are, you know, in this lifetime? It's not the roles. They're just things that we've done. It's not who we are. So it's, um, albeit important roles, it's important to know who we are without all that. And I see, I see so many women trying to shortcut this, you know, they just try and shortcut it and they accept a job. And then, you know, after a few weeks, they can tell that it's not the right job for them. And so they resign, they do a little tiny bit of work. And then a couple of weeks later, they accept another job. And again, they go through the same process, trying to shortcut it. We can't, we can't shortcut this. It, it's this, this is this stage of life. This is our rite of passage, you know. It's kind of, it's work that we need to do self-exploration in this phase of life. It's, it's not mm. about, uh, as one of the healers that I follow, it's not about business as usual, as she calls it. 
Um, it's not about business as usual. This is about moving into another phase of our lives. So if we're not going to get clear on who we are now, then when are we? Mm. It's, um, because mm. it, that gives us the foundation for choosing what we want to do next and knowing mm. that what we choose to do next is going to be in alignment with who we are because if we don't have that alignment at this stage of life, when we're going to lose our energy, we're going to lose our vitality. We're not going to feel mm. like we're thriving um, because it's all down to alignment. When we're younger, we've got the kids to distract us. We've got the larger family to distract us. We've got work, you know, the, where we need to earn income to pay the mortgage, um, feed the kids. That's sort of, we've got all those distractions, all those responsibilities. But when we get to this stage, we don't have it anymore. <laughs> mm. Mm, that's right gone. Yeah, but yeah. we're not used to reflecting on ourselves and what we want mm. I mean some of us probably don't even know what our favorite color or flower is <laughs> you know yeah, like it's, right. it's, it's as basic as that yeah. and so we're sort of been chatting for a little while so we're going to be coming towards the end of the the interview which is always a shame for me because I love to chat to my guests for a you know, I could chat all day, but we, we're talking about this finding new direction and you talked about journaling. So would that be the first thing that you would suggest to yeah. someone who wants to find their direction? Yes, yes, yes. You need to start journaling and start to get very clear, exploring who you are. You just ask yourself a simple question, who am I now? And start writing and, and see what comes out. I mean, of course, I do a program that helps women do this. So I'm going to say, yeah. find yourself a coach that you connect with mm -hmm. and do this with that coach because the coach is going to give you the insightful questions that are going to help you find the answers. Um, often when we're doing it ourselves, unless we have the, I don't know, the skill set of someone who's been trained, um, we ask ourselves limiting questions. We want to ask ourselves possibility questions that open up all the possibilities. And mm. um, that's what you get by working with someone who does that professionally. Um, yeah. And, and just let me say that uh, I find difficulty with journaling and I'm sure, and I've heard other women do too. You sort of get your book, it's all nice and pretty and you get a lovely, you know, I've got the new notebook, I've got the pen to go with it and I'm all ready to start. And then you think, I'm not really sure what I meant to write or, you know, so I think that, as you say, getting someone to help you with the process is important is if you don't, just for opening up even just to, yeah. to, because, you know, you can be looking at the blank page and say, I really don't know what to write down. Um, so journaling is not always that easy. I don't think. No, no, it's not. And it, 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 most most people need some kind of process to follow, even with yes. journaling, um, because it's, you know, journaling just spontaneous is fantastic. I mean, that's how I did it. But like I said, I'd already had seven years coach training before, you know, coach experience and two years of coach training before that. So I already had all the right questions to ask myself. Um but, yes, yeah, spontaneous journaling, it's important if you do spontaneous journaling to do it without judgment. Yeah. You know, don't judge anything. Just write it down as it comes. It's, it's mm -hmm. important to do that. Even if you write down, you know, when you're exploring yourself, even if you write down what you perceive as negative qualities, it's fine. It's part of who you are, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's part of who you are. It's part of what you've brought into this life journey of yours so um it's it's everything needs to go down one of the things i do ask um my ladies to do when they go through the program is what are your shadow shadow side qualities you know what are they just talk about them or write them down mm. ponder over them accept them because normally a shadow side is only the underside of a strength Yes, and I think that uh, we're more prone to writing or speaking about our negative traits rather than acknowledging what our strengths are and because we don't want to feel as if we're 
big noting ourselves or whatever. We just don't want to. We, that's just the way we're being conditioned to think. But um, as you say, I suppose in one way, if you you can write down the negative things about yourself, but by the same token, you've got to try. I think it's harder to try and write the positives. Mm. But once you do, that starts to build that confidence there and perhaps show you a pattern of of where you want to do. You might want to. You might love traveling, or you might. Um, want to explore volunteer work or lots you know so many other things and that can come down to the person that you are and what sort of a fit you might be for for what brings you joy yeah that's right yeah that yeah that's just exploring all the different parts you know what who am i now what makes me me what lights me up what do i enjoy what interests me you know what do people say i'm good at you know all of that sort of stuff it's yeah um, yeah it's um it's it's not a five minute job. It took me three months, and I've mm. been doing this for other people. You know, it took me three months to do this for me, um, before I actually had a bit of an idea of what I was going to do, and I took action. Um, but yeah, it took me three months. It's it's not a five minutes job. It's not something you can do in two weeks. <laughs> no, no, no. It's really getting to know yourself. So. Um, we're, any other tips on how we can find our direction? We've got the journaling. I suppose then it's a matter of doing that first and then taking a look and, and really um, pondering and examining what you've written. Yeah, it's really reflecting over what you've written and looking for alignment between, you know, the things that you enjoy, the things that you're interested in and who you are and mm. looking for that alignment I mean core values play a massive part in this work values play a massive part in it as well um even if we're retiring work values are important because we've been at work for god knows how many times every day how many hours every day mm. so those hours they're, they're going to leave a void so mm. those mm. values are not going to be fulfilled unless you get clear on what the values are and look at how you can fulfill them in a retirement sense, you know, what mm. activities you can get involved in that will help you fulfill those work values. Mm. Mm. And it's, it's probably an ongoing process. I mean, you can change direction if things aren't working out, but at least if you have a starting point and have an idea of where you might like to go, that's going to up and open up new pathways for you. And yeah. we do want to be thriving in our next chapter because a lot of us are in very good health and the next chapter can be quite a long one. So we don't <laughs> want it to be, um, you know, we want to make the most of it and, yeah. and find that joy and fulfillment in our life because it really is our time it really is our time and, and it's knowing that that is possible as well you know knowing that this this is meant to be the most empowering time of our life this is where mm. we really step into our position of leadership you know even if it doesn't even if it doesn't feel that way sometimes you know we get to this age and if we've got kids, they seem to know it all. Have you noticed how a lot of the time they know it all? Yeah. <laughs> now? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, and they, <laughs> exactly. And they don't need your help, right? And they tell yeah. you. So it's kind of like, oh, I'm, I thought I'm meant to be the wise one. You, you are because it comes. It, it's, it, it comes with grandchildren. And if you don't have kids, it comes with nieces or nephews or other young people that need guidance you know this mm. this is our time to to be the wise woman to step into that place of um leadership mm. yeah leadership that sounds like a really big word but it's it's um it really is it's where you know in in, in other cultures and tribes the wise woman is the leader so it's it's seeing that for ourselves you know we have so much to give at this stage so yeah. much to Tribute, um, so much wisdom, and it is useful and it is needed to take humanity to to where it needs to go next. And so it's mm -hmm. important that we do this work for ourselves, so that we can contribute with confidence. Mm. Mm. That's a lovely note uh, to finish on. But before we do, I do want to ask you the question that um, 
I ask everyone who's my guest, and that is, what does being a woman living well mean to you? All of that I just talked about. So, yeah, <laughs> it does. It, it's, um, it's a mind, body, spirit thing. It's, um, yeah, looking after ourselves, making sure that we live a balanced life that's unique for us, um, making sure that we're doing all the right things for our body physically, remembering that the mind affects the body and the body affects the mind. So, you know, if we consume lots of sugar, then we're going to be confused in our thinking. So um, it's important to, to know that, that, that the, the cleaner our diet is, the more clarity that we're going to have. So it's, um, and then doing that inner work, like really getting to know who we are now, what brings us joy, what lights us up so that we can contribute, continue to contribute into to the world in the way that we want to and, and create a life that is a life that we love, a mm. life that we love and a life that's going to bring us joy. And this is, this is true even if we have a partner. I know with partners there's a there's a compromise and it's important that that happens for the relationship. But if you don't get, get clear on what you want now and what kind of life you want to create, it's you're you're very likely to just go along with what your partner wants. And that's not mm. like enough. So no. um, important to know be, that can be difficult as well so that's another topic that i'll have to get you back to talk about because <laughs> that that can be a minefield um but um anyway but it's been lovely to have another chat to you deb it's always great to have you as a guest and um you to share your wisdom and your thoughts with us on helping us to thrive in life and um, we've really talked about increasing our vitality and finding that new direction so thanks so much for joining me today my pleasure i've loved every minute of it it's always a pleasure to chat to you so have a lovely day and uh, i'll be putting all the links into the show notes so that people can find you and i would encourage women to perhaps contact you if they are having difficulty finding new direction uh, because Deb can certainly um, help you with that process. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Well, it was great to chat to Deb uh, today about her process to increase vitality, finding new direction so that we can thrive in our next chapter. If you've enjoyed the episode, I'd love you to share it with a friend give me a like and leave a comment. I'll be leaving the show notes, uh, in the show notes, I'll be leaving all the links for you if you would like to contact Deb if you are having trouble finding that new direction in your life. So that's it for this episode. And until next time, remember to live well, enjoy life, and most of all, be a woman living life your way. Bye for now. <music>